In line with the joint tourism promotion, countries in the Northern Corridor recently agreed that each member would have a specific time period in which they would market or campaign a flagship tourism event. Now here in Rwanda, that event happens to be the gorilla naming ceremony, commonly known as Kuiti Zina. Now with that event slated for September 5th, later this year, we set out as the Doing Business in Rwanda team to see the gorillas ourselves and to get the tourist views and experiences on the same and what Rwanda and the Rwanda Development Board is doing to make business sense of it all. Let's take a look at how that went. My name is George Nirango. Welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda. Our journey to northern Rwanda took over an hour from Kigali. Upon arriving at the Volcanoes National Park in Musanza district, the team and tourists were split into groups, primarily according to fitness and depending on whether any of the individuals had seen a specific gorilla family in a preceding trip. After the briefing on how to conduct ourselves around the gorillas, we finally set off. Our group had been assigned the newest family, the Amahoro group of gorillas. Well, as you see, we have eight people today going to see the gorillas with us. So we went to Amahoro group. So Amahoro is a group composed by 20, uh, 20 members. Uh, as we have seen that uh, we saw the silverbacks, we saw the babies, we saw the females, we saw the blackbacks, uh, you know, uh, it was a great experience. There has been concern regarding the gorillas leaving their natural habitat to feed on farmers' plantations in nearby farms. According to Francis, our tour guide, this is a result of the reduction of the size of the park. The animals are, however, being restrained to one area to allow the local population to carry out their day-to-day -day social and economic activities. We have the gorillas here. Here there is uh, the farmers. So sometimes, you know, is a, a conflict between both of both sides uh, the girl is coming down here as you have seen that you see the uh, footprints of the buffaloes in the pyras ram plantation uh, sometimes also the buffaloes coming outside of the forest even golden monkeys coming to raid the crops 50 years ago the park uh, the forest was big very very big uh, because of this uh, uh, pyras ram plantation 55% of the, the dead forest gone. So can you imagine 45 is, uh, is very small. It's a time the uh, project uh, think about to, to make a, a buffer zone here. So it was uh, not uh, well done because to extend this park is possible. The problem, you see here there are so many people living around of the park. Uh, to pay them, it's co it costs a lot. And in addition, uh, when you give them the money, and where, where do you go? Nowhere to go. And to find the, the, the land is not easy. Even if they find the land, um, it, it, they can use that, uh, that, that money. When the money finished, what do you do? Here they have the farms, uh, they, they have big land here. So I'm sure the money they get, they will get, it is not enough money to buy another big land like this one. These, most of these people living here, like porters, uh, truckers, most of them are exporters. They are well now educated. We put more effort to educate these people living around over the park here. Now they stop to poach those animals. Who poached them before? Is this these local people here? And when they see the schools here, when they see they have water, when they have the schools, when they have hospitals, so they understand. They, now they, they change. They are changing their mind. They change their mind. The gorillas have slowly gained popularity over the years. Just last year, the tourism sector recorded over three hundred million dollars in revenue, with visits to the volcanoes mountains to see gorillas contributing over fifteen million dollars. We are very excited this year because we are naming 24 gorillas, baby gorillas that have been uh, uh, born since the last um, Kwitizina. Um, exciting um, to report that because if you recall the year before we named 18, the year prior I think we named 17. So we are increasing um, the the um, population 
uh, that's that's by itself a very exciting um, uh, move, and and uh, we and basically a solid uh, confirmation that conservation efforts in in Rwanda are paying off. We had uh, friends who come and they, who feel very very attached to the habitat and to communities, and they regularly come every year. Uh, we had uh, some who have who are setting records, like 50 times to see gorillas, 100 times to see gorillas, and everywhere they want to come to, see, to be part of the, 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 the change, uh, and they, they work as the uh, promoters or the mobilizers of others to come to see gorillas, but also to invest uh, in making conservation work through supporting uh, communities. And there are a lot of opportunities because Rwanda uh, being promoting the high-end tourism uh, is really that we wanted to achieve. Behind me are three out of 20 gorillas found here at the Volcano National Park. Now to have an experience such as this, you'd need to part with $750 or slightly less if you're an East African. An amount that most will say is steep, but to see them ravel and coexist in their natural habitat to some is something that is worth every coin. I mean, seeing what we saw, I think is priceless. And $750, what it really does to the, I mean, Rwanda, from what I know, really relies on the tourism industry. And this really helps the economy of, the, of this country and it, and it uh, helps, helps the people of, of Rwanda. So I don't, think it's, I don't think it's too expensive. I've done a little bit in, in Burundi. I've done a little in Kenya. Um, this is probably the most I've done. Well, I think Rwanda as a country is the safest out of the, all the ones I've been to. Um, uh, people are very friendly and uh, it's a, they make it for a, a great experience to get out and see the wildlife and it's, been, it's really been good. I think the experience was absolutely fantastic. Um, it was, uh, your country is so beautiful in Rwanda and just to see the, the scenery and the type of uh, topography as we traveled was great. Um, and then to actually again get a chance to see the mountain gorillas was, uh, again, it, it, it is absolutely phenomenal. It's quite wonderful to get a chance to be able to be that close to these, such an important, uh, you know, an important animal. When I was very young and saw the Diane Fossey uh, Mountain Gorillas, uh, Gorillas in the Mist movie, ever since I was young I always thought that would be a really interesting, neat experience to be able to do. I did not know that you could do it in Rwanda until I was looking into doing a safari um, in your neighboring countries. And then as I was doing, looking on the internet uh, to uh, see about the safaris, I came across a um, YouTube video about some people here doing the excursions with the mountain gorillas. And I showed my wife and just fell in love and said, we must make sure that we make a stop in Rwanda to see the gorillas. It, it was something that uh, I've spent the last 18 months uh, preparing to, uh, in our, putting together our itinerary, making sure we get to the time, the time from work to be able to travel from Canada to here for the time frame and to make arrangements at home. So it, it was something that took a, a bit of time also because of the, um, naturally the cost involved. It was something that we uh, saved, uh, saved up for. But again, uh, we look upon it as, I thought originally be a once in a lifetime, um, I have enjoyed it so much that uh, I think I will be coming back and hopefully bringing others with me. Surrounding the gorilla naming ceremony, various events will be held by the Wanda Development Board before and after September 5th. This present lucrative opportunities specifically for the private sector to tap into a regional market. Beyond Kwitizina, the date itself, where we are naming gorillas on September 5th, we will start with activities leading to Kwitizina. The other exciting part, um, which is why our friends from the Rural Environment and Development Organization are here with us today, is that we will celebrate um, a new event that we call Inhazurgwand, which is uh, the cow. What we started last year will continue, which is uh, an important um, uh, activity for two operators and the industry in general, which is the fam familiarization trip um, for, for regional players, but international players as well. While Kuitizina is pretty much a government event, 
um, managed by RDB, but I think government manages like 50% of it. The rest of the 50% is us in the private sector. How? Because what is quitizina basically? It means it's, 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 it's naming the newly born gorillas. That's all. I think what the government will do, they will not even know the names. They will just organize us and put us together. That's all. The rest, name it, name from organizing the day, fine, that is with them, but inviting the guests, where are the guests coming to stay? They are coming to stay with us. How are they going to travel in our cars? Where are they going to sleep in our hotels? How will they eat our food? All these are items that RDB has nothing. Now it's the private sector completely reaping from the event. Any type of activity today that is intended to promote the growth of the economies in our countries, <coughs> it becomes too narrow to, to look at it in isolation, to look at one country in isolation. Like it is an event in Rwanda, so it's, it's, we are finished. You don't, you don't quite make a lot of sense because we have opened up the region. It is one market. We talk of uh, one around 164 million people as our market. So as RDB is looking at Kuitizina, they're not looking at a few people from Rwanda, no, they're inviting across the, 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 the region. Rwanda's flagship event, the Gorilla Naming Ceremony, has created room for domestic and regional campaign events to be carried out. And with the establishment of a single tourist visa for the East African region, the country is set to see a higher stream of revenue in the near future. Beyond Kuitizina, what we are looking at is to really take um, advantage of the integration process. You are all aware that uh, the Northern Corridor Integration uh, Project is an initiative that started um, about a year and a half ago. It is yielding results. Um, it is giving business, enhanced business within our borders. And uh, we hope that as we celebrate Kuitizina, um, which has now moved from being an event belonging to Rwanda to an event belonging to the region, we are likely to see um, greater leads, yields from, from um, the tour operators in the region and, and from the populations, populations, um, uh, locals and expatriates living in uh, neighboring countries. That's all from this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. Now with the event slated for September 5th later this year, we hope to see you right here in Kigali, Rwanda, experiencing the gorillas with the rest of the global population. To give us feedback or insight, email us at dbir at abn360.com or tweet us at DBI Rwanda. My name is George Ndirango. Thank you for watching. Keep it CNBC Africa, first in business worldwide. Yeah.